Sevian versus Hans. The, the game itself is boring, and the end is really exciting. Okay, so they played some kind of Catalan with tons of theory. If only Matt Larson was here. The most common move is queen c2. I'm not sure what advantage queen a4 has over queen c2. It transposed because it went a6 takes. So it's, it's the same as queen c2. Okay, b5. This is so theoretical that even I know it. And I'll play either side of it. Okay, now black played a move you would not play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when I show you, you'd be like, I wouldn't play that. Rook a7. I'm not familiar with this move, but I'm sure it's just theory. This is Sevian versus Hans if somebody could put a marker. Well, I was a little worried about what happened if the knight moved mm -hmm. on f3. Not anymore. So that solves that problem. Right. A4, b4. It's a little weird. And the engine says this is all equal. Says everybody's great. And now he plays queen a8 and he gets a battery because his rook's on a7. So he's really defending his a-pawn a lot. And that a-pawn is really well protected. Mm -hmm. and Carissa won the tournament so it's not too bad she lost yeah I didn't tell you this but in the last round there's two women fighting for first Carissa and, and Toka Genova okay. and they're both winning and then they both lost <laughs> so Carissa won because she was ahead so Carissa oh, lost and now Toka Genova if she wins or draws she can win the tournament but she lost too Oh, I and see. here's how Toker Genova lost. There's a lot of things I could tell you, but I'm going to tell you the important one. Mm -hmm. She has a losing position. Jennifer used thinking. And the clock gets to one, one second. After it gets to one, she touches a piece, makes a move, and hits the clock, and it still says one. Jennifer you and she got 30 seconds because it's a 30 second increment. Mm. That's how fast she played it. Uh, and then she won, Jennifer you. But if she it said zero, then Toker Genova would have won the U.S. Women's Championship. That was a $10,000, you know, moving your hand really fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, 91. Again, the game is boring, but it gets exciting. Do we know the thought behind Rook A2? I think they just didn't want to look. Rook A7. I mean, well, they said Rook A2. Right. But I think they meant... I was telling them Rook A7. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I think it was just to protect the bishop. Yeah, protect the bishop, play queen A8. But then the seven. queen came over. Mm -hmm. so. C5. All right, so this is pretty equal. Black's better here. The engine doesn't like GF. The engine wants to play bishop takes f6. And probably he didn't play that because he was worried about taking this in knight b3. <clears throat> so he took with the g-pawn. Now the engine says it's equal. Still equal. Still equal. King g7 is a funny move, inviting knight h5 check and then king h6. Now after knight f4, Hans could play king g7 and they'd probably repeat. And the game would be a draw. Hans plays for the win, f5. The engine says it's about equal. Knight g2, fiend cutting the knight. Black's slightly better here. Black has nice pieces. It was very boring until it wasn't. Engine still prefers black slightly. Repeating again. Now Hans can claim a draw with queen b8, but he plays king h7, playing for the win. The engine doesn't like king h7. Knight f4, and... Hans plays knight e5. The engine says knight takes f4 is just equal. But Hans plays for the win, knight e5. And now this pawn's hard to defend. And by hard to defend, uh, you can't defend it. But the engine still says it's equal. Bishop h8. Now white's slightly better, but it's very complicated. And they're in time trouble here. And this is the end of time control. Rook takes g6. This is, they made time control. Okay, and then 
Sam tripled it up on the bubble up, Rick C1. And I'll get to the exciting part. The, the whole game is sort of boring until the end when all hell broke loose. He got his pawn back. And this is good for white, it says, because Black's queen is like trapped over here. Han still plays for the win. This is a slightly worse ending for black, but he plays here. And this is still better for white. Okay, now white made a mistake. And the rest of the game, Hans plays really well and Sam plays really badly, like for the rest of the game. Up until here, they played about the same. And the engine says white's better after queen c5 because you're attacking the queen and the b-pawn. And if you trade queens, rook isn't so good. And white's a pawn up. White is a past h-pawn. Mm -hmm. okay. So queen c5 and white has good winning chances. Sam played like a human move. Rook, rook here, because, you know, that, that looks good. Yeah. Okay. And Hans said he was all talking a badge. Played rook g4, and he said, my rook defends g8 and my bishop defends h8. So I don't care about your rook a8. Now the engine says white's still slightly better, but he made a bad move. He played king f1. Very bad move. Now it's equal. Queen d6, threatening queen d3 check, and queen d1 check. So king f1 wasn't good. Mm -hmm. That was a bad move. Now he should play king e2, which stops both threats. <clears throat> queen d1 and queen d3. Mm -hmm. But he didn't. He played queen b7. Sacrificing a piece which loses uh, in practice, but draws in theory. So queen b7 is not a mistake according to the engine, but it is a mistake because he doesn't know why it's not a mistake. And he's never gonna know. Nobody would ever figure out why it's not a mistake. So he just thought if you win by knight, queen f7 check is too good. And Hans said, if you think that's too good, I'm three good. So he took the knight and Sam played queen f7, which looks strong. And after king h6, he's all talking a badge. He's got nothing. White, white's got nothing. You've got nothing. Every square is defended. Okay. Now, it turns out this is a draw because white has an amazing move that draws here. That's why the engine doesn't mind sacking the knight. And when the engine showed Yasser and Christian and Kate, they were, like, laughing. And they were like, I wonder if, like, Sam will find it. And I was rolling my eyes because nobody could find it and then he didn't find it so he lost the only move that draws is rook a5 that attacks the bishop but more importantly if the bishop moves i can take on f5 because the e6 pawn is pinned wait now what Let's if you move the bishop okay i can take this and white's winning because the e6 pawn's pinned. Oh, I see. Yeah, and white's winning now because rook h5 mate. So rook, h, rook a5 draws because of this rook takes f5 trick. <clears throat> okay, so instead he played queen f8 check. Now he's lost. And then Hans said, I have a pass b pawn. So he played queen c4 and then he queened it. That was a good plan. I like his plan. And he said, I'm queening my B-pawn. You can have my E-pawn. Pretty good good plan. B3, B2. Okay, rook here. Queen check. Now, if I queen and take your rook, I'm up a rook and a bishop. <clears throat> so Sam played F3. So when you queen and win, then, I, then you lose your rook. Okay. But obviously, Hans had figured this out. You check. You can't go to the back row because then I queen would check and I take would check and I keep my rook because you're in check every move. So you have to play king h3. Now I queen. You take my queen. I take your rook. You take my rook and black plays. Um. Oh, yeah. It's the only winning move. Queen h1? Mate. And mate in one is the only winning move. You're not winning the end game if you don't play queen h1 mate. Queen f1 doesn't win. And he, both players saw this mate like six moves ago, but you know, 
But Sam allowed the maid, just like Irina Crush allowed herself to get mated against Tata. 